Hello again, everyone. Here's another little chap from my um, Gummy Pan mystery bag. What a little cutie, isn't he? So I thought I would make a birthday card with him. And the first phrase that <laughs> came to my mind was, a little bird told me it was your birthday. So I quickly typed one of those out on the computer, printed it out, and I thought I would have the little chap sitting on a log. Can you imagine him kind of like this? Sitting on a log with a little bird told me it was your birthday at the top or to the way up, maybe that way up. Who, who knows? So what I thought I would do is just have a bit of fun with the log, apart from anything else. I'm going to stamp this chap. Um, before I stamp him, I'm going to just trim the stamp up a little bit because if you keep these corners on, when you stamp it with your ink pad, you probably get little bits of ink on these corners and then there's a possibility that they could transfer to your um paper. Today I'm going to cut him out so it, it's not quite so vital but in the ordinary way if you were going to stamp um, an image that's going to be with its surround as part of the card front you wouldn't want black blobs on it would you? So that's why I'm trimming just a bit closer around the corners. Okie dokie. There we go. So those can go out. Now, as ever, um, Gummy Pan stamps are just the stamps, no adhesion, no easy mount. So just a quick swipe on my acrylic block and on he goes. OK, now I should be able to use this of this to stamp him on because I intend cutting him out absolutely up to the line so that there's no whites around. So that's just, isn't he a cutie? Can you see? Oh my goodness. I don't know what he's called. The stamps don't actually usually have names on. The, the, the dies have a label on that says what they are, but this just gives you the, the item number, the price it was. Gosh. These mystery bags are such good value, I have to say. Right, let's just stamp this. So I don't know what kind of dicky bird he is, but he looks like, his little claws look like he's hanging on to something. So I'm going to have him hanging on to the, to the log. There he is. Bless him. Doesn't he look cutie? So I've got a bunch of, he's going to be a chick. He's going to be a, a tiddler, so... He could be a little bluebird, actually, couldn't he? I never thought of that. But he's going to be yellow because I've got, I've got yellow markers out. Right, let's just have a go. I think what I'll do, I'll use this one. This is called Honeycomb. I'm going to use this for his beak and his toes. And I think I might just try and use it for a bit of sh shading as well. Shall I just round the edge? It might be a big mistake, but we can always stamp another one if it's if it's not right. Let's just do a little bit of shading around the edge. Okay. Let's leave that one for the minute. Um, I've also got Indian Saffron butterscotch and bright sunflower they never turn out the color that they look but let's just have a look at these let's open this end let's try that one next come in a bit further with that one overlapping the two colours so they they blend. This um, linen card from Cintigo is, is absolutely super for alcohol markers. It blends brilliantly. Now that one looks a bit dark, doesn't it? No, it's not. Right. Let's do, oh, it is a bit dark, actually. Let's just do it on one side then. There we go. 
and I'll use the rest with this one. Put that one over there as a bit of a, a danger one. Right, here we go. I don't like to go over the ink too much because if you do use the wrong ink, it will smear and we don't want that to happen. Right. I better use the other entry's top knot, I suppose. As long as he doesn't look flat, that's the main thing. Now, to get him his eyes to shine a little bit, I'm going to do... Um, What's that one? A little bit of uh, jelly roll pen in white. And then I'll put another black blob on that presently because with black eyes, he looks a little bit, you know, I don't know, a little bit uh, serious. Now, as for the log, what I want to do with the log is cut it out a couple of times three maybe and layer it a bit so that we get a bit more definition so here's one should have done this beforehand shouldn't I there's one here's a second And there's my third. So what I want to do is this. I want to stick two together straight away to give it a bit more chunkiness. And then I want to cut this one up and put it in bits on there so that I get a bit more definition, a bit more relief. Now you may see that I have my new precision press out here. So I'm going to have a go with it. Um, I'm, I'm so well off for glue now. It's going to be interesting to see which one I I grab for and the one that um that I've put in is the finest nozzle the skinniest one so we'll see where we go see how we go um, right there's my second layer of that one just stick it together okay bit more robust. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up this one and then into sort of every other strip and then stick them onto there. So, oh no, this is, no, that's the double one. This is the skinny one, isn't it? Right. I'm going to get this end piece and I'm just cutting through where these, um, bits are joined. So let's put this one on. This is going on this very top bit here. Hardly need any pressure at all actually. Right, that one's going on there. Just that bit. Can you see? Not bothered about the bits of glue sticking out. Now this this piece here, just nicking through the tiny places where the die is joined. Going from the other end. Always used to say to the children, always have the the bit you're cutting out on the side you can see. Which is why I wouldn't suggest that you end up kind of this way because your, your hand is obscuring. Right, this is for the broad bit here. There we go. Stick this one up. If I can pick it up. Right, that one is going right there. And we'll cut one more. What I'm saying about the side you can see, um, I'm cutting this side here of this one. This is the one I want and if I was to cut it this side here, I wouldn't be able to see because my hand and the scissors would be in the way. So I'll turn it round and do it from this side. 
Sometimes you can't help it, but it does help if you can actually <laughs> see what she's doing. Oh, Lord. Right. Just trying to push it, that's it. Okay. This bit goes just on there. So let's glue this last little piece. There we go. It's just hopefully to give this log a lot more texture. Is that the right way up? No. That's the right way up. Okay. You see? Let's slide it in pos into position. There we go. I'm, I'm trying to make the bark much more ridgy. If you get my drift. Okay. Now, to add a bit of colour to this one. And for this, I think I'm going to do some smooshing. Have I got a little something or other? Here's a little bit. It looks a bit grubby, but still, we won't worry about it. And I've got some sort of wood colour, woody colour things here. Let's start with frayed burlap. And I'll just put a little water. And let's just shove it in like this. I want it to go down into the crevices as well. So let's just get a brush. Okay. Now we'll have a slightly deeper colour, I think. Get rid of a bit more of that. We want a bit more space. So what else have I got? That was a frayed burlap. Let's have the brushed corduroy. Okay. Let's try it without, first of all. Give this a little spread. Not bad. Sometimes here I can see pinkish sort of colour. It's some of the, the components of the of the, the colour are actually reacting differently with the water. Right, and some what have I got here? Ground espresso. Let's just have a little bit more in the corners. I'm going to have to dry this off because it's going to be kind of quite wet. You see, it's starting to look a little bit more craggy, a bit more rugged. Now, the last one I think I'll do is just to drag it neatly over the actual log itself. Over the <laughs> Over the log, over the pad itself. I should wipe my fingers in a minute as well. Okay. Let's give that another little spritz. Okay. I'll leave that for a minute, but I will be drying it off more in a moment. Obviously, I can't put a soggy log on my card okay while that's just drying for a moment i will just cut out this little chap right now to cut out this little bird first of all get rid of stuff that i don't need make it a lot smaller and i want to cut actually on the line but i will speed this up There we are. Now, if you have got any places where, if you're cutting through the line, but there's a tiny bit of white of the out, outer side of the line still showing, all you need to do is to get black marker and just simply do that. As easy as that. And that white mark will miraculously disappear. 
Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just going to put his eyes on. I put the whites of his eyes on with the jelly roll. Now I'm just going to use, um, this one's a bit fat. I'm just going to use a, a fine line marker. This is a skinny one. Just to put his eyes back in like this. Okay, make him look like he's looking at us. Okay, now I'm going to dry off this log. So I will speed this up again for a moment or two uh, while I do that. Right, now then, if you look at that, because this is ink, compared to that which is alcohol marker um the ink looks a bit flat it looks a bit plain so you can do one of two things well you could probably do a lot of different things really you could emboss it you could do all sorts but this is something that you can use this is distress glaze and it's just a kind of a creamy pasty thing and you just rub it on with your finger like this and then you buff it when it's had a little chance to dry buff it with a paper towel so that's that's that the other thing you could do is to go over your uh, finish with maybe something like Wink of Stella or this Glitter Gloss from Nouveau, just to give it a bit more life. Now, him, I'm going to make him look a bit fatter than he is because he's very flat at the moment. So I'm just going to put him onto a, an embossing mat and shape him just a little bit, make him look a bit more rounded. There we go. See the difference? He's kind of round. Bless him. So now all we have to do is stick that onto there, this onto there. Now this one I will stick on directly to the mat, to the panel. This chap, he's going to have a little bit of foam tape behind him just to lift him up that little bit make him stand out and I want to put him on so that his feet are just about touching the top of the log. So let's put some glue on the on the log. Try this again, see how we get on. It's a strange kind of, um, it feels like a strange reaction to me um, to press this. You have to press quite hard. But I suppose it's on your thing, all of your fingers instead of just on your thumb kind of thing, you know. So this is going to go. Now, do I want that at the top or the bottom? I think I'll have it at the bottom. So let's stick that on first. I'll cut it out. I've got a. Now, is that the same width? That just about fits, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. It's a bit close, but we'll see. If I think it's too close, I can always print it out again and um, <laughs> get a bigger one. There's always a way, always a way. Right, let me just tape this down. I sometimes like to put a, a double mount so that you know, just make this a bit more emphasis. Have one that's just a tad larger all the way around. And if you haven't got a die, you can always cut that out with a with a trimmer. Right. There we go. A little bird told me. Now that needs to go on tape as well, doesn't it? On a. Let's just stick the thing down. Let's just stick this down. Okay, let's just pop it there. What can I just tap it with? That's fine. 
now we'll pop this chap on. Let me pick up my there we go. And now him. Put this onto foam tape too. I'm just I'm still kind of wondering whether I should make a, a, a second. No, I don't think I will. I was wondering about putting a second layer underneath just to emphasize it a bit, but I think raising it on the foam tape should be sufficient, really and truly. So let's see. I think this font that I've used on here is called Broadway. And one thing I'm thinking I might do as well, I'd better do it before I do that actually. I'm just thinking I'm going to use one of my dear little um, art impression stamps just to stamp a few bits of tufts of, of grass around, just around here, just to make it look a bit, you know, I've got some tiny little blocks here. There, so I want a green issue. Then let's have a bit of rustic wilderness, that'll do. There we go. Do you see what I mean? Just kind of grounded it, hasn't it? Right. Just got to stick the... Um, sentiment on and then pop the whole thing onto the, the front of the card which is the only way I've put it oh back there right a little bird told me it was your birthday there we go that's for that I haven't actually scored this yet but I will do there we go a little bird told me, isn't it cute? And that was practically for nothing that in my mystery bag, he's such a sweetie. So, as ever, thank you so much for watching. Um, my, my numbers are still toing and froing, upping and upping and downing. So if you could keep checking that you are still subscribed, that would be absolutely wonderful. And uh, I'll see you next time.